Hey everybody, Brian Shannon here from alphatrends.net. Today is Friday, the 25th of July, 2014. Uh, let's take a look at our closing numbers and then we'll look at the charts. The uh, uh, semiconductors got hit the hardest this week, down 2.7%. We'll obviously take a look at those. Uh, the S&P 500 was basically flat and uh, we also saw a little bit more weakness in the Russell 2000, which is uh, our worst performer year to date, down 1.5% and is having a pretty rough month as well. So let's take a look at the charts and make some sense of this. We're obviously still in a primary uptrend. Uh, we've heard for basically the last four, five, six years that, uh, well, it started out as a sucker's rally and then people were starting to believe that every little pullback was the top. So far, we have no evidence that there is an uh, all-time top in place here or a top that's uh, going to be meaningful. We do have this S&P 500 still uh, riding this nice little channel that it's in. It kind of got out, outside of it up there a little bit, but basically in the midpoint of this channel right here, uh, with a rising 10, 20, and 50 day moving average, we're still on the longer term basis, innocent till proven guilty. We do have mixed messages, however, when we uh, look down at a shorter term time frame, for instance, the 30 minute time frame that we see here. Um, today, you know, today we gap down uh, to what I thought was an important level, about 198, and we were watching that because it had been prior resistance, uh, and then turned into some support here earlier in the week the market gap down to that level and it's also of course where we see that five-day moving average and then continued down so uh, going into next week I think in order for us to be uh, intermediate term uh, more bullish uh, we would have to see it back above 198 and a quarter and to hold above there otherwise we'll go into next week cautious within an overall uptrend and again I'm always cautious on the market I really it's not just a, a saying that risk management is job one you have to look at each stock that you're trading and trade based on what that stock is doing you can't look at the S&P 500 and say well I shouldn't be trading CMG which was up another three points today after uh, this big gap higher on earnings or it doesn't mean you can't trade uh, Baidu or Facebook which is continuing to uh, re do really well you have to take each stock on a stock by stock basis and manage risk according to what that stock is saying and when you're trading the indexes that's a different story when you have the S&P 500 below the volume weighted average price for the day then it is uh, considered uh, in my opinion guilty to prove an innocent for that day only and that you would want to be looking for short opportunities for day trades but with the five-day moving average now flattening out perhaps we could hold uh, shorts for a very uh, shorter period of time but it's very difficult to, to be able to time a top or anything near that top uh, and, and be able and not get shaken out so it's better to be as they say on the sidelines in cash wishing that you were in rather than being in and wishing you were out and you uh, you, you, you know that it's true that the uh, those who've been trying to short this market sure wish they had been in cash sitting it out the Nasdaq uh, let's take a look what the closing numbers were there we were up about a half of a percent for this week adding to the gain uh, of nearly 10 percent year to date so we're clearly still in a very strong uptrend here the 20-day moving average has been an important level of support for this market and that also kind of ties together with uh, what's been a little bit of a trend line here we could look uh, kind of like this going back to uh, mid-may so we're still in a primary uptrend in the NASDAQ. And uh, we're also, uh, it's good to see, we held above this 96 to 96.10 level. This is what should be our first important band of support for this market next week. If we break below that, then perhaps we get a little bit deeper pullback that does see it come down towards that 20-day moving average. The 20-day moving average is right now at $95.48. Not that that would be your target to, for it to touch that level uh, or that number specifically and then make some kind of miraculous turn higher instead it's a level to be aware of where we have the potential for support if this first bigger level uh, fails to hold at about 96 so looking at the 10 minute time frame in order for us to be intermediate term uh, positive right now we're gonna need to see it get back above th this little level right here so back above 97 and holding above 97 then this trend uptrend should continue to move higher there are zero signs of a top in here we see 
see a market that's just pulling back once again and people tend to panic when we have a pullback and the Nasdaq has been you know as we know it's up 10% this year uh, and, it, and the, the weakness in the Russell 2000 really hasn't spilled over into other areas so the Russell is down one and a half percent and as I always say trade what you're trading if you're gonna trade the Russell 2000 you trade it based on the price action of the Russell 2000 not on what you think the relationship between the Russell 2000 and the S&P or the Russell and the uh, NASDAQ should be. You trade it based on the price action of the Russell 2000 solely. So we're still you know, in a primary uptrend, but maybe undergoing uh, just some consolidation here on the daily chart. Uh, if you wanted to call it a double top, it would have to break below the significant support down here at about 107 for it to be a completed double top. So we don't have any evidence of a top. All we have is a market that's kind of been uh, really more neutral here the last six, seven months. And that, uh, you know, we don't know whether this is going to resolve back to the upside, whether it's just catching its breath, breath before another massive move higher, or if it breaks down. Some, no, there's no one who knows. That's a fact. And anyone else who tells you otherwise is really just uh, guessing. What we have to do is take the market in small tradable chunks at a time. We've been focusing on a couple things here. We've been looking at the uh, uh, Fibonacci retracement, and we bounced last week from the 61.8% retracement. And I don't think I have this uh, well in here we have the volume weighted average price year to date which we're back uh, just below once again as well so you know realistically the Russell 2000 I wouldn't be surprised to see it drift back down to the uh, uh, to test the recent low just uh, above 112 um, when we look at a little bit longer term you can see you know this is where we also have that 200 day moving average so we're looking I'm looking at this market as more kind of indecisive in here and really not much advantage to being long. We saw that uh, on Tuesday this market did gap higher, uh, but it was really kind of untradeable there unless you were willing to chase it uh, until it pulled back. And then it looked like this 114.50 was going to hold and was the important level. Well, obviously today's gap lower and continued weakness uh, nullified that as a support level. And now we look at it as support broken tends to act as resistance. So any rally up towards 114.50 would be should be met with some skepticism. It doesn't mean you sell short just because it's at that level, but watch the behavior up in that area. And then if it begins to back away, then perhaps there's an opportunity for some short side action. I would think though, it's really going to have to get, you know, for us to become positive on this market, 114.50 to 114.75 is the key band of, uh, of what should be resistance now that it's going to have to get back above that and hold above it before we can get positive on this market and think that it has the ability to uh, continue higher once again. So still the Russell 2000, just a very choppy market. The semiconductors, uh, as we mentioned, got hit pretty hard this week. And um, I think it was LAM that basically uh, started that out, LRCX, LAM Research, uh, that kind of got them hit. Or maybe it was, no, it was Xilinx, I'm sorry, XLNX. Uh, which is a semiconductor equipment manufacturer, and they gapped down on Wednesday. And that's kind of what led to this uh, weakness. You can see the weakness began on Wednesday, um, and we, you know, we've known that this has been in a massive uptrend, unrelenting, and this key level of support today broke 49.5 to 50. So I think that uh, you know, next week it wouldn't come as a surprise at all to see it come down towards the low, en low end of this recent range and maybe dip uh, uh, just below that uh, rising 50-day moving average before a bounce could ensue. Um, the 50-day moving average is at $48.50 right now. So perhaps we continue down towards that level and then get a little bit of a bounce if you're a higher risk bounce trader. Uh, but right now, uh, you know, this the uh, in the intermediate term, the semiconductors, you've got to look at them as guilty to a proven innocent. And I think 50 to 50 and a quarter is going to have to be taken out before we could look at this market uh, and be able to trust that uh, upside rallies will be uh, able to to hold and, and add to them with a declining five-day moving average it says be very cautious here so you know the semiconductors again they've had a great year so far they're still up 15 and a half percent so we've got a, a some profit taking let's see what happens we don't want to try to pick a low uh, but we want to be aware of what are the levels that to, to look out for and I think the first level is again that 48 and a half financials are kind of still in this uh, little um 
uh, range in here we can see that you know we bullishly we have the higher lows and we keep seeing repeated tests of resistance so this 2305 ish area is what it what's t developing into a uh, band of resistance between let's just say 23 and 2310 is our band of resistance in here this group however is firming up somewhat I mean you can look at this as uh, being bullish so you know I think back below 2265 would be negative for the financials um, but we would still be within this bigger range as well so I think that financials are really kind of in uh, a little bit of intermediate term no man's land uh, but there is obviously opportunities on in individual stocks in the banks and any sector that you look at so again be aware of these sectors but you know if you're trading Intel trade Intel based on what Intel is is trading uh, how Intel is, is trading and Intel is still in a primary uptrend now it makes you a little bit nervous to see the semiconductors fall Falling apart and Intel holding up like this so maybe that's your reason to, to trim some off but not every semiconductor is going to trade with the semiconductor index Intel was uh, up a little bit this week whereas this the group uh, was down 2.7 percent so they don't all trade together all the time trade what you're trading manage the risk on what you're trading as well gold is uh, you know retested that little pullback low over here and trying to firm up at this prior area of uh, support Support. So we've got uh, you know 125 ish basically uh, in the 50 day moving average where it's trying to hold a support longer term. I still think it's just kind of uh, no man's land here, um, but you know uh, arguably starting to look somewhat better. Uh, with the the bonds this week had another good week. We saw that uh, the TLT uh, was up uh, one percent on the week, and that continues to drive interest rates lower. Of course, on the weekly time frame, we can see that we're getting into this area of potential supply but that doesn't mean the market will find resistance there the trend remains higher it's innocent till proven guilty we saw the little shake out a week and a half ago and from that failed move has come a very fast move and vast move higher as well up uh, you know close to well just about more than five percent since that little shake out Apple this week reported earnings and uh, that got the, the stock to, to get moving here on Wednesday. It's holding up nicely and uh, if, if you're involved, I'd say you, you stop uh, you know a, a longer term position probably would go below 96 and a quarter ish that will give you protection underneath that pullback low uh, after the earnings report it seems like it's headed for a hundred dollars a share so still looking good but not all the earnings were were uh, responded well we saw that uh, uh, Amazon today got hit down 35 points or about just under 10 percent and if you look at from this uh, from the year low to the recent rally that came in right at about a two-thirds retracement and this prior resistance now I'm not saying that this will become an important level of support uh, but it has the potential to be and uh, you know we just saw a lot of uh, big you know really big moves actually this week from CMG who reported earnings and was way up whereas uh, McDonald's uh, was was down pretty significantly and it's kind of interesting when you think that uh, McDonald's actually initially was a uh, investor in um, CMG and spun them out about four years ago Facebook uh, had a great week as well that uh, you know the stock was getting extended into earnings and then it added to uh, the gains on those earnings and today Baidu was up at uh, an all-time high so you know when you look at some of these big cap stocks like this that are behaving well and of course it's not all of them Netflix may be a little bit weakening in, in here too but when you see so many stocks acting uh, strong and again Intel's a gr one of the greatest examples that I can think of right now is just the relative strength versus the semiconductor index they're not supposed to trade like that so what it tells you is don't throw your intel away but be aware of where your stop goes on Intel not based on where you know the SMH breaking fifty dollars a share that's not why you sell Intel you sell Intel because Intel breaks a level of support there's a lot of great opportunities in this market each and every day my job is to bring those to you guys present the low risk setups and help uh, kind of coach you along and that's what I do every day at Alpha Trends if you haven't take a trial go ahead and uh, if not thanks for tuning in and have a good weekend